Ladies and gentlemen, this week in Silicon Video, we're going to be discussing AMD's Coherent Interconnect Fabric, which is a new bus which will, I guess you could say, replace PCIe for some systems and allow the communication, faster communication, between GPUs, CPUs, and APUs in upcoming systems. So let's get into this because it's quite a complex topic, but I guess there are multiple elements that we need to go through in this video. First of all, why is the need for upcoming buses starting to hit us now? Well, there are multiple reasons. As many of you are aware, DDR4 is now becoming a thing for next generation CPUs. For example, the Zen and even a lot of Intel's current CPUs are starting to make the switch to DDR4. For example, Skylake. It's simply because faster CPUs require more memory bandwidth to be able to feed them. GPUs are doing very much a similar thing. They are going ultra-wide buses with GDDR5. We're seeing the normality, I guess you could say, of 384 or 512-bit buses, or, of course, the introduction of high bandwidth memory, and soon high bandwidth memory too, which aims to add a lot more memory bandwidth to feed the vast number of stream processors inside the modern-day GPUs. In short, it's all about making sure that the processors don't need to wait for data to be sent to them. But... When dealing with new systems, systems which have the CPU constantly in communication with the GPU or the GPU receiving instructions from the CPU for the CPU to, say, offload some of its workload, this can be either from gaming in terms of compute-orientated tasks, for example, physics and lighting and artificial intelligence or what have you, all the way down to conflict, complex mathematical equations for upcoming, um, let's say, scientific research or even something really less I guess you could say crucial but still very important and that would be let's say bit mining it's all very very complex and requires a lot of bandwidth for the CPU to be able to keep up with the GPU and vice versa now as many of you are aware we are on currently PCIe 3.0 and obviously that offers considerable amounts of memory bandwidth PCIe uh, time 16 offers considerable amounts of memory bandwidth over let's say PCIe 2 and therefore over 1 but as we're moving into the next generation of processors eventually we're going to start hitting the wall so therefore AMD have come up with coherent interconnect fabric so essentially this is an ultra wide low latency coherent technologies which has been created by AMD. Now there are numerous differences between it and Nvidia's technology which we're going to go into in just a moment. However it's important to note that AMD believe that even their current generation's fastest GPUs for example the Fury X is just not powerful enough to offer the dem or to meet the demands of their current customers. This is particularly true once again when dealing with data farms, that type of uh, institution where s they'll quite often have multiple nodes altogether. So that's why a GPU inside a workstation needs to be able to access a massive quantity of data and be much more efficient in running together to be able to, I guess you could say, string multiple graphics cards together. So, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, NVIDIA are already working on their own technologies, which offer an interconnect speed of around 200 gigabytes per second. AMD's is considerably less at only 100 gigabytes per second, but there are some points that we need to go through. The first is we don't know about the latency of any of the uh, technologies that we're discussing at the moment. Latency is kind of a big deal, and at the end of the day, it could be that AMD's technology is better in some tasks, or NVIDIA's is better than other, or it could be there is a clear winner between NVIDIA's or AMD's, we just don't know yet. The other, and I guess you could say most important difference, and perhaps the one that's going to be the one that affects most customers, is a very simple one. NVIDIA's is essentially aimed at IBM based servers. So IBM Power P uh, 9 CPUs with Tesla Voltus GPUs are where this is being aimed at. Now it is very impressive. You're going to have large amounts of coherent memory, 512 gigabytes, for example, high BM memory plus DDR4, and 
it should be absolutely astounding. In fact, Nvidia are boasting a, a theoretical performance of 40 teflops per node, which is absolutely crazy. We know less about AMD's, unfortunately. What we do know, however, is that it is going to be working with their own processors, which makes sense, obviously. So we're going to be looking at an x86 implementation, which could potentially mean a good thing for us as gamers, because who knows where that's going to end up. I guess it depends on the pricing, but it's theoretically possible that it could trickle down to us as gamers rather than just being for ultra high end devices. Now I'm sure some people are going to say well AMD are copying Nvidia or Nvidia are copying AMD and to be honest I don't feel that this is the case from either company. Essentially this is very much like when I mentioned ages ago why the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One are still using very similar components. I have no idea what the video's name is but it was a long time ago I think it's around 2013 I put out the video or oh, maybe even late 2012. Essentially, why were the PlayStation why was the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One using the same basic components, the same GCN architecture, the same APU, I guess you could say. And it's a fairly obvious point. You have a solution or a problem, and the solution is more X. So in AMD's case, they need more memory bandwidth for their own processors, so they need to develop something. They need to develop a new standard to be able to provide that bandwidth. And the same thing with NVIDIA. When they're dealing with the server market, their customers are complaining, yeah, we're, we're not able to get the speeds we need. We need to be able to get more. Therefore, NVIDIA are working with IBM to be able to facilitate that. And it's very much the same thing with Sony and Microsoft. Sony, of course, said... They had a budget, same as Microsoft. In other words, it's irrelevant how much money as a company you have. They know that they can only sell their consoles for so much, but they need a certain amount of performance to justify customers upgrading from the Xbox 360 for the sake of argument. They have a certain amount of TDP, power and heat production. And finally, the processor itself can only be a certain amount of size and they have to get the the actual hardware out by a certain date they can't wait till let's say 2020 for upcoming technology therefore that's why they went with AMD because Nvidia's pr products were too expensive AMD had the APUs and that's why they all they both settled on that and that's very much like why Nintendo have been recycling a lot of their components for let's say the the Wii to the Wii U now, AMD have actually been working on, I guess you could say, precursor technology for some time when it comes to the coherent interconnect fabric. And I say precursor because it's not the same technology, it's an evolution of sorts. They have been working with hypertransport for some time with their own range of processors, and indeed, I guess you could say that it's... It's a cross between that and um, their own acquisition from uh, C-Micro, which was a subsidiary of Advanced Micro Devices, which actually shut down in 2015, early 2015, April to be precise, which once again was creating various products for um, high bandwidth memory servers. So I've said a whole bunch of words but what does it actually mean for us as customers? Probably nothing for now. Just like, unfortunately, a lot of technology, it's still probably on the back burner. We don't obviously know what AMD are planning in the background. For example, and I'm not saying this is rumors, I'm not saying this is reports, I'm just giving an example. We don't know if AMD is saying in a room somewhere, let's release Zen by the end of the year and then early 2017 let's release our new motherboards with the next generation of um, I guess you could say our own proprietary technologies which would feature uh, can I just say CFR CIF can I say that fifth can I make it a thing because saying coherent in connect fabric every bloody time is kind of a thing so I'm gonna just say SIF damn it so it would feature SIF on it and it would mean that Essentially, high-end Zen processors would be able to interconnect with lots and lots of, um, I guess you could say, Arctic Island GPUs. You could have like, you know, let's say three or four of them, 
and it would be available to us as regular customers. And obviously that would mean a bleeding edge type of design, but theoretically speaking it could certainly happen, which would be absolutely madness from us as gamers. Let's say that you're a gamer who's aiming for 4K surround though, you could conceivably start using that. Or let's say that you're a gamer who does a lot of bit mining, you're a gamer that does a lot of computer orientated work in the background. Let's face it, just because you're a gamer, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only thing you do. It could mean that you do a lot of high-end video processing. It could mean that you do a lot of 3D work. It could mean that you do a lot of science calculations, that type of stuff. And it, it can be kind of taxing just because you're a gamer doesn't, once again, preclude other usage for your machine. So I have a feeling that that could certainly be a niche because, let's face it, who could afford that type of level? Well, probably some people, but not many. But it could be kind of cool. The only problem with that, of course, is that it would mean that, theoretically, GPUs sold with that connection would not be operable on a regular PCIe slot. So, essentially, you'd be kind of locked out. So, let's say you were to buy a Zen processor and that motherboard solution with that GPU solution, you'd be pretty funked if later on you wanted to say, I'm going to upgrade to an Intel processor because your GPUs would be essentially useless. They'd be paperweights because unless there was some adapter, you wouldn't be able to just plug them into a PCIe slot. Once again, however, a lot of this is guesswork. A lot of this is speculation because at the end of the day, we just don't know enough about this. And this is why I was saying that we can't really make a guesstimate of what on paper is the better hardware between NVIDIA Link and um, SIF. I'm just going to make it a thing because we don't know technologies such as latency and once again it could also just be a usage case based scenario or pricing based scenario. It could be for example on paper NVIDIA's solution is better but AMD's is better if you don't have so much money or maybe if you don't have such robust requirements. We just don't know at the end of the day what either company are planning, unfortunately. And to be honest with you, although a lot of this stuff is probably in the planning stages, neither of them probably know too much about what the other one is really going on behind the scenes. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.